slowly appears and goes, Hillary Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry, carry on. But yeah, it, it, it is. I would definitely look at that. It was, yeah. it was funny of Ken Cheng when he no, did. No, I didn't. That. I didn't know Ken Cheng did PowerPoint comedy. Um, I did. I did a PowerPoint comedy show. Um, <laughs> Harry, my cat died. It was a. It was a Twitter account I ran uh, from 2013, which was One Direction fans telling Harry Styles that their cat was dead. That was it. That was that was the Twitter account. I was just retweeting and quote tweeting that, and then that developed into a show about uh, crazy fandoms in history, and that was a PowerPoint presentation. But it was one of the easiest shows that I'd ever written. But it was so fun to perform. Um, but yeah, some if you like, I mean, Dave, Dave Gorman did like five series of uh, of uh, Modern Life is Goodish, and that's all PowerPoint presentations, and each one of those are hilarious. Uh, much much commendation to the guy. Hmm. It's who? What was it called? Now, what what have you learned? So you mentioned this before the podcast. But what have you noticed about all your years in Edinburgh? So I'm going to say what I thought of my years in Edinburgh. Okay. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of artsy students in Edinburgh. Yes. And there, and a lot of drama drama students, and there's a lot of craziness. And the flyering is a real pain in the neck. Mm-hmm. Um, comedians is quite funny. A lot of the times, a lot of comedians that you would speak to in the London circuit will walk right past you. Yes. And it's it's of... blinkers. It's it's imaginary blinkers. If you need to get to a venue, if you're doing a ten minute set as part of a, a compilation show, you are just face down to the venue. Um, I accidentally did that with uh, Charlie Brooker and Connie Huck. I was flyering, and they were determined to get. To the, they had the kids with them. I was like, "Hey, there's a musical comedy show in a bit," and they're like, "No thanks." I'm like, and I it only resonated like thirty seconds later. I was like, "That was Charlie Brooker and Connie Huck. Sorry about that." <laughs> Sorry, Charlie, <laughs> Connie. It, but what have you found? Like, how has Edinburgh changed since you've done it? Okay. And how? What have you? What would you say are some of the do's and don't do's? Right. And what is your advice for people for making the most out of the fringe? Okay. So, my, I would say your first year at the fringe. Don't do a show. Get books in like a five minute, 10 minute spot somewhere, but just do it for like four or five days, right? And just do the odd performance. See a bunch of free shows, right? Uh, There's no point in paying for a comedian who's going to be on tour near your hometown in the next couple of months. Absolutely no point. No point in that. See how it works. See See how the vibe is. Stay out late on your first visit because you are just basically a, a tourist at this point, but you are doing the odd spot. And just see how other people do it. See how other people are at all stages in the day, because Edinburgh is very hectic throughout the entire, until about 3 a.m. It is so hectic, right? So just take it and then see if you think, yeah, next year I'll be able to do a show, right? If you get to that conclusion, fantastic. You're ready to do a show. The second year, uh, do a show, but do a limited run of say five days or a week. Do it on the free fringe, on PBH free fringe. I'll get you a nice hot venue. <laughs> um, uh, but they're, they're absolutely wonderful to work with. Um, so sign up for that, absolutely free. You get your venue for free. You get a bucket donation at the end. Do 45 to 50 minutes as a show, right? Advertise it as an hour. Audiences will never be disappointed mm. if the show finishes early because they're most likely got a whole schedule of what they want to do. And if you've added 10 minutes extra walking time to their next venue, they're going to love you for it, right? And time moves so slowly anyway, or quickly, depending on uh, how fun the show is. Have a good bucket speech at the end and sort of say, and also have like some sort of social media presence. It can be one, it can be all of them. Um, and like ask people to follow you on it if they enjoy your stuff and tell people about your show, Right. Do not register for the Ed Fringe website in, in that year, right? Just do the five days because your show gets into what's called the Wee Blue Book. And there's more than 10,000 copies of that that people are reading and looking to see where to get to the next show. The third year, uh, you do a full run. You do three weeks. That's if you're capable. That's if you want to after, after, the, after the first uh, short run. Do three weeks. Um, don't do what I did, which is treat it like a party. Because I had the mistake of basically doing my show at 4 p.m., finishing at 5 p.m., 
using the money that was in the bucket to get drunk until 5 a.m., then go to my flat and sleep until an hour before my show, and then I did my show. That was a vicious cycle. At one point, my flatmate saw me in the street and said, well, you look yellow, because I was jaundiced as fuck. Um, so I had a, a big old, like, 36-hour nap. So don't do that. Don't do that. So I'm going to skip to, say, my third, fifth or sixth year, 2017, which is where I started taking it seriously. Um, you can do the fringe for less than a thousand pounds. The way I do it is I get uni accommodation with uh, five other rooms. Uh, we get five of the comedians in those rooms. We split the costs and do your own flyering design. Do not hire a designer. Um, you do that if you've become a successful comedian, uh, because designers do deserve all your money. They do excellent work. Um, but no, don't um, don't hire a designer for you at the Edinburgh Fringe show. Don't do that. Design your own flyer. Ask other people if you think it's good enough, like, like see if they can make any changes. Uh, print them from uh, can printers in Edinburgh. They do a great deal. Hang them up yourself and flyer yourself. Because if this is your third year at the Edinburgh Fringe, nobody, nobody knows you yet. Nobody knows you. You still do the PBH Free Fringe because people take more of a gamble on a comedian they don't know if it's free entry. Uh, the, do, don't do the paid fringe because you had a successful free fringe. Doesn't work that way. Um, I know a guy who had a very successful free fringe uh, where it was free entry. The following year, think, oh yeah, I'll do a paid show. It'll be eight pound a ticket, and nobody came because nobody knew who he was. As we discussed earlier in the podcast, ego is a really bad thing in comedy and can actually hinder you. Um, and then just have like a good time. Try like don't make commitments to see all your friends' shows as well. Um, because like they, they will understand, they, will, they won't come see your show. Um, say, oh, it clashes all the time, that's great. Um, but you need to free up time, you need to free up time for yourself, right? So um, the way that I did it in 2019 was um, I just had uh, the one daily show and my, it was at three, was it three, what time was it? Uh, 3.30, 3.30 till 4.30 or 4.25 um, <coughs> uh, to get people in and out. And then I'd have like a couple of drinks there. I might caught one show, but my curfew was 10 p.m. I had to be in bed by 10 p.m. every day. And that was something that I set in on myself. Uh, it meant that it was more money saved because I wasn't just spending it in the pub until five. I also allocated myself uh, six nights out out of the three weeks I was there uh, just to have fun and always have at least one day off every week. There are so many performers who only have one day off during the three weeks. That's going to kill you. Uh, pick a day like Sunday or Monday where not many people are going to come to the show anyway. And yeah, and that's how to do the show, The Fringe, for less than a grand, I'd say. And then, yeah, just uh, just keep building up your own platform. Uh, you be in charge of it all. Try and get the same username for all the platforms, right? If you're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, and you've got five different usernames for all of them, no one's going to keep up, right? So try and find like a username that works for you. And yeah, that's that, that's all right. And then tell people to follow you on it and then share the fact that you're doing a show if they've enjoyed it. And yeah, that's uh, that, that's my fringe advice. No, that's a very, that's a very good bit of advice. It's, it's, and, and how do you handle all the garbage in Edinburgh? Like how do you handle, um, what's it called? Because I, I had it quite a few times when like, the last fringe where someone said, oh, do you want some LSD? And I oh, take it. oh and... yeah, I, I, I say no to drugs. Um, I'm a very Grange Hill 1980s uh, perspective of drugs. No, um, I mean, unless you're young and, you know, can survive that. But no, I, I worry because of my, uh, my past um, problems with alcoholism until I, I blacked out and I like, often in places that I didn't even know existed. Uh, I would never sort of like do any drugs that are known for. I'd want to be in a safe place. Like if I was ever offered drugs, I'd be like, oh, as long as I'm in a safe room and I know where and the doors are locked and I know that I'm going to be here in the morning. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, w w when you get to um, 1 a.m., that's when all the, all the fun drug fun. But all I do about that is just avoid standing outside the hive. Uh, and uh, yeah, you should be left alone. <laughs> And, but what, what would you say are some of the difficulties mentally with the fringe? Because I hear a lot oh, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of people who post advice like saying drink lots of water, but you're going to remember to drink water. Uh, eat a banana. It's got lots of potassium. Yeah, sure. Like, don't 
don't don't don't don't fall for that. I mean, definitely, definitely do eat and drink a lot of water. Um, have a selection of friends. Um, my venue was the Globe Bar in Nidgey Street. And on day one, we did all the tech and set it up and everything. And then we tried to have like a group chat, especially um, the comedians I was living with in the flat. We had a group chat as well. And the idea is, is sort of be open saying, right, this group chat is for like things about the flat, if like there's anything wrong. But also, if there's anything wrong, like with yourself, let us know. Like, because there's going to be, there was 12 of us at the venue. There's like six of us in the flat. Like at least one of us will be around. So sort of ask Oh, is anyone around? I'd love to talk. Uh, but I know a lot of a lot of people, not just community, a lot of people are quite secluded when it comes to talking about mental health and talking openly like that. And that's fine. But make them sort of like, not make, don't force them. Just sort of like let them know that you will listen to them if they're feeling down as well. I'm like not a mollycoddle the whole situation, but definitely have like a core group of people. And especially if there's a lot of people there, hopefully one will be like you'll be able to rely on. Um, but it's also post like talking about it openly as well. Like if you're friends with a lot of comedians on Facebook, sort of like state, hello, just, you know, hope everyone's having a fun day. If you're not, I'm going to be here. And then they might join you and you'll have a talk and rule the world, Ru sort out the world. That's it. Not, not rule the world. Don't do that. Um, I had a I had a comedian friend who was very, very low. Um, I think I think it was 2017 and I was on my way to a gig and I saw I saw them basically crying in the street. And I had to approach them and went, what the hell's going on? And she wasn't making much sense. She was having a bit of a breakdown. And so I said, just wait there. And I walked into the Banshee Labyrinth, um, lovely venue, but there are about 15 shows going on there at once. And I went in because I knew I was going to see someone that I knew. And I found a comedian, right? And I went, are you free? And they went, yeah. And I was like, right, I'm doing a gig around the corner. And I gave them all the details and what they needed to do. Just tell them I sent you. And they went, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'd love to gig now. So he picked up like flyers to fly the end of the show and he went to the gig. Um, so I could sort out my friend, basically. So I was on my way to a gig, saw my friend crying. So I got my friend to do the gig for me whilst I sorted this out. Hubbub spaces like Nidji Street, where there's like so many things going on. If you are feeling like you need someone to talk to and you're a comedian and you know a lot of comedians, there's gonna be someone around. Edinburgh is so, so small and so compact. So if you're looking for someone to sort of help out or just have a chat with, or maybe you're thinking, right, I, I need a pint, but I'd love to see someone and have, have a pint with them. Just go into any venue on Nidri Street, there will be uh, someone that you know there, uh, as long as you know that. So basically um, have core, sort of groups of friends. They don't have to be best friends of anything, but if if it's people like who are sharing your venue and are sharing your flat, you're going to be seeing them all the goddamn time anyway. Um, so you might as well have a group chat and sort of use that to your advantage if you are feeling low. Because talking about it helps so much than bottling up. Hmm. Basically be each other's therapist. No, that's, a, no, that's, a, that's good. That's fine. No, it's, it's good. I do find that as well. Sometimes when I'm a bit down, I just chat to someone or I talk on the phone to someone or it often gets it away. But yeah, it's so there we go, guys. All right, listen up. There's your takeaway for Edinburgh Fringe. <laughs>